Hi folks, I'm Nikki from the University of Wolverhampton. I'm here to help you keep an element of creativity in your homeschooling curriculum. Today's tutorial on pinhole photography is aimed at key stages three to four. However, as always, anyone can enjoy this tutorial. There's a STEM-based crossover today while we get to grips a little bit with how photography works. You'll need black paper or card, a roller and pencil, scissors and or a craft knife and cutting mat. A piece of tracing paper, a pin, a dark coloured piece of fabric such as a blanket or towel, glue and tape. Photography literally translated from its ancient Greek roots means drawing with light, so light will always be our primary resource. But did you know that in its purest form, photography can be traced back to the 5th century BC, first described in the writings of Chinese philosopher Mosey? In its simplest form, photography is a projection of light within a dark space. It was used for thousands of years by artists including Leonardo da Vinci to help draw out paintings by tracing projections long before we found the ability to preserve and record an image, which did not come to pass until 1826. But it took eight hours to record the earliest exposure, hence you can see how the shadows in this view from a window don't appear to make sense. The name for this early form of photography is camera obscura, or darkened room or chamber in Latin. Theoretically, all we need to make one is a darkened room, and the ability to make a tiny hole exposing the opposite wall to a narrow shaft of light. But that's quite a lot of work, so we'll make a mini one, with a slight difference so that we can see how it works. You're going to need to make a black box, or at least a box that's as light tight as possible. Draw out the net of a cube and cut it out, but also cut a window from one of the sides, leaving a clear border wide enough to fix tape to. Over this window, secure a piece of tracing paper. Then fold it all up and glue or tape shut. Make sure it's as light tight as possible. In the centre of the side opposite your tracing paper, poke a single hole with a pin. This hole is lens aperture. Think of the tracing paper part as a screen. And you'll need to be able to shut out as much light as possible, so here's where your blanket or towel comes in. This is going to look really silly. Place it over your head, wrap it around the box, and point the hole at something with a distinctive shape. It'll need to be quite well lit. You should notice that an image is projected onto the tracing paper, but on closer inspection you'll see that it appears upside down and back to front. As any of my former students from over the years will be able to tell you, the thing to remember about photography is that everything is back to front. Big apertures are recorded as small numbers. Shutter speeds are recorded as fractions, so again, big numbers mean fast speeds. And photography starts with an inverted image. And the camera is very similar to your eye, particularly if you're using a focal length of 35mm and an aperture of f8. Light is projected the same way and we focus the same way. A digital camera will flip the image in a similar way to the way that your brain has evolved to do so. But a more traditional film camera can't do this, which is why we have negatives, which need to be turned into positives. It's all about physics, and I was rubbish at physics at school. Simply put, light reflects off objects and travels in straight lines. Where it squeezes through the pinhole aperture, the beams of light cross over to project an inverted image. It's all incredibly sharp as we're dealing with a tiny aperture, so the depth of field is infinite. Why don't you try to get a photograph of your pinhole projection and send it to us? I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it's helped you understand a little bit more about how photography works. Follow us on Facebook for more creative tutorials for all ages coming soon.